الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له العزيز الحكيم وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. This is a ni'mah, indeed. Uh, the sisters are saying that there's no sound on their side. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Play. Don't tell us. خير النعم الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة. All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. It is a tremendous نعمه upon us that Allah سبحانه وتعالى He has guided us to Islam. It is a نعمه that we have a deen that is perfect, a deen that addresses all of those affairs that are necessary and needed. For one's success. Bidnilahi ta'ala, it is of extreme importance, especially in this day and time that we live in, especially in this era that we find ourselves in, that we cling and we stick to those righteous individuals that we befriend those righteous and noble individuals and that we have good noble and holy and uh, wholesome examples this is of extreme importance now uh, especially for the youth but it's incumbent that we all understand and we recognize this reality is that the affair of role models is very important because whether we realize it or we don't realize it, whether it is something that is done knowingly or unknowingly, we will take role models. We will model our behavior and structure our behavior after others. And it is important that we model our behavior and structure our behavior after the righteous and that we knowingly strive to do such and that we impress this upon our children to do such. And if anyone were to say that or to challenge this concept, then if you were to ask many of the youth in particular why they dress, for example, in a certain manner, or why do they speak and use certain jargon, why do they walk even in a certain manner? You will find that upon very simple analysis, they will realize because of such and such, an individual, for example. Now, and you see this reflected in trends. You see this reflected in uh, what is currently popular and in, so on and so forth, that it changes. It changes depending upon whatever force has the ear and the attention of the people at that particular time, then you find them molding themselves after that particular uh, individual. A role model, a role model in the English language is a person that is looked to and taken as an example. Now, this is how it's defined in the, in, in the English language, a role model. In Arabic, it's, it's called uswa, uswa. Now, and an uswa, 
Another word for it is qudwa, is an example. Naam is an example. Ma yuqtala bihi, it is that which you imitate, it is that which you emulate. Naam. And this imitation is not restricted to just good imitation, it can be any imitation, whether it's good or whether it's bad. That which you take as an example, you mold and you model yourself after them. It could be good or it could be bad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us this reality and he explained to us very clearly this concept where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُ That whoever imitates a people, then he is from them. Now that's general. So if you imitate a good people, then you are from them. If you imitate a bad people, then you are from them. So on and so forth. Naam. Which shows us that this type of imitation, or this type of, of emulation, that it has a direct uh, effect, an impact upon a person. It has an effect upon their mentality, it has an effect upon their likes, it has an effect upon their dislikes, so on and so forth. It has an effect upon their worldview of what they deem to be acceptable and not acceptable. So it is incumbent that what? That we model ourselves after what? After those who are righteous. Also what enters into this is that what is that the friends that we take, then this is a reflection of what we ourselves are upon. The friends that we take, then this is a reflection of what we ourselves are upon and what is going on internally, right? That will manifest in the friends that you take. Why? Because those who are alike, like each other. Now, there is a saying uh, that is shared between Arabic and in English, the exact same saying. That birds of a feather flock together. You see? This is the reality. Those people who are alike, like each other. Those people who are righteous, they will lean towards those who are righteous. Those people who are not righteous, they will lean towards those who are not righteous. Everyone will find what they're looking for depending on what's inside of themselves. So it is incumbent that we acclimate ourselves and we train ourselves to want to be around those who are righteous and to and to want to imitate those who are righteous. Now, this is incumbent. It is incumbent that we do this. You know, from the methodology of the deen of al-Islam is that we live our lives and our lives, they are structured by the Qur'an. By Allah's book. Naam. That our lives, they are structured by the sunnah of Allah's messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That our lives, they are structured by looking to those righteous ones who were the companions of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And no one would debate that. No one would debate their virtue. No one would debate their superiority. No one would debate that they are the best of mankind after the Anbiya and Rusul. That they are the best of mankind after the prophets and the messengers. No one debates, when I mean no one, no one with a sound intellect will debate the righteousness and the level of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Nor will they debate the righteousness and the level of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So on and so forth. No one with uh, an, an ounce of intelligence will debate their righteousness, their superiority, their virtue, their service for the deen of Islam, so on and so forth. No one will debate that who has an intelligence, who has an intellect, who is intelligent. No one will debate that. Now, the Prophet wasallam, when he was asked, who are the best of the people? The Prophet wasallam, he said, خير الناس قرني ثم الذين يلونهم that the best of mankind of my generation then those who follow them then those who follow them so when we look to role models we want to look to those individuals who are righteous those individuals who their righteousness it is proven those individuals who their righteousness is not up for debate there's no debate about it so first and foremost then it will be who? the NBA. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us an example of this inside of His noble book. Allah ta'ala, He tells us, He instructs us, uh, That verily there is for you in Ibrahim 
a most excellent example in Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, a most excellent example. So we see from this that the excellent example is in what the Anbiya, is in the Prophets. But also there is a good example inside of the righteous. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَ And those who are with him, Ibrahim and those who are with him. The ulama of tafsir, they mention that there are two statements as relates to وَالَّذِينَ مَعَ And those who are with him. The first statement is that what is meant and intended by those who are with him, a al anbiya the prophets, man, the prophets. And this is good. No debate about that. Man. Likewise, what could enter into the meaning, and which is the second statement of what is intended by Walladina Ma'a and those who are with them, a a salihun, those who are righteous, those believers who are righteous. Man. And this is good, and there is no problem with this, there's no debate about it. Why? Because as you find, as the ulama of tafsir, they mention that whenever you have the likes of these particular ayat, that there comes possibility of various meanings that are contained therein, then you will find that this is an ikhtilaf to no work. This is a differing uh, where every shade and aspect and angle is correct. Why? Because they can coexist without negating the each other. Now, they can coexist without negating each other. So we understand that the righteous examples could be found in the NBA and the prophets and the messengers and, and inside of the righteous people. And inside of the righteous people. Now, as we will come to see, uh, it is a must because I don't think that there's a single Muslim <clears throat> except that they acknowledge this on a certain level. If you were to say to them, should we take the prophets and the messengers as role models, the response will be yes. Naam, it will be yes. If you were to ask them, should we take the righteous, the righteous Muslims, the yani, uh, the Sahaba, the Tabi'un, the Etzbat Tabi'in, the first two generations, should we take them as examples? They will say yes, no, no, no doubt. If you were to ask them, should we take Imam Abu Hanifa as an example? They will say yes, no doubt. If you were to ask them, should we take Imam Malik as an example? They will say yes, no doubt. No one will argue. If they, if you were to ask them, shall we take Imam Shafi'i as an example? They will say yes, no doubt. No one will argue. If they were, if you were to ask them, should we take Imam Ahmed as an example? They will say yes, no doubt. No one will argue about that. No one will argue about that, right? But my question is because. And, and this is something, you know, that me, myself personally, I like to challenge myself, you see, because what we know, if we don't benefit, if we, if we don't act in accordance to it, then it won't, it won't benefit us. Now, what we know, if we don't act in accordance to it, then it will not benefit us. Now, so just knowing that, uh, that concept, acknowledging that concept that it, it is good to take them as examples, then I want to see how does that translate practically inside of our lives? How does that translate? Because when we say that to take the prophets and the messengers as examples, and this is something that's good and it's undebatable, then the natural question would be, well, then how much do you know about the prophets and the messengers? Right? Can you name five off the top of your head? Could you tell me something about each of those five in which you just named? Now, or let's say four. Let's keep it uniform. Four. Now, but... What about the Sahaba? Can you name me four Sahabi and tell me something about them? Huh? Whether Sahabi or uh, uh, any male or female. Can you tell me something about one of the Sahaba? But what about the Imams, the four Imams that were mentioned? Can you name me four of them and tell me something about them? What about the Tabi'un, Etzbat Tabi'in, so on and so forth? The Imams of the religion, can you name four? Can you name four and tell me something about them? And when I mean something about them, something about their character, something about their interaction, something about their righteousness, something that we can take as an example. What can you name something about that we can take as an example? Which shows you that there are many of our efforts and many of our pursuits, you know, they are lost and they really uh, uh, end up in no benefit for us. And this is what the shaitan, he wants. The shaitan, you, you have to remember, the shaitan, was alive before our father Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, right? So the shaitan, he, what, he predates human beings. You understand? So now all of these years later, all of these, you know, only Allah ta'ala knows how many years later that is, that we find ourselves here now 
it, it will be inconceivable for us to think that the shaitan is not well acquainted with us in how we act. Right? Anyone who studies history, when you look back through history, one of the things that jumps out at you when you study history and you go through the biographies of people's lives, no matter when they lived, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, so on and so forth, a thousand years ago. When you go through their lives and you go through their biographies, you find striking similarities between what happened then and what happened now. Striking similarities between their aspirations and what they wanted out of life then and what we want out of life now. To almost to the point where it is what it is, as they say, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the same, right? Um, so when you look at that and you realize that human beings, for the most part, are pretty much the same, no matter what era they live in, no matter what time frame, what century they live in, they're pretty much the same. So with that being the case, would anyone doubt the fact that Shaytan is very well versed in how to deceive us? Shaytan is a pro at tricking us? Of course, because he's been doing it for Allah knows best how long. Generation in, generation out. Same trick, remarketed, relabeled, same trick, right? If, 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 if one would like an example of this, an example of this, we'll give a brief example, because this is not the, the point of, the, of, of this discussion, but one would like an example of this, one need, only need to look at the concept that shaitan has presented to human beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come in a person of particular man. Nah. Shaitan went to the Christians and convinced them that it was Isa. Right? Shaitan went to the Rastafarians and convinced them that it was Hali Salasi. Right? Shaitan went to yani, uh, NOI, Nation of Kufr, and convinced them that it was Master Father Muhammad. Right? Shaitan went to the five percenters and convinced them that it was Clarence 13X. So on and so forth. When you step back and you look, you realize it's the same trick. It's just remarketed, it's relabeled, but it's the same concept. Naam? And when you look at others, you'll find the same exact thing. Same trick, just change the names, change the label, but it's the same thing. Right? So, getting back. One of the things that Shaytan is very skilled at doing is distracting us from those things that really benefit us, right? So we become super busy, we become hyper yani, uh, vigilant over things that in actuality have little to no benefit for us. But then when it comes to those matters of the deen that truly benefit us, nah, that truly benefit us, a person... He don't know about them. You see? He don't know about them. When it comes to him having fiqh of the religion, he doesn't know about them. He doesn't know. The things he needs to know, he don't know. Right? Because fiqh, lughatan, is what is fahm, is to understand. Fiqh in, 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 in the lugha is to understand, to have an understanding. Naam? Then you have fiqh, the shari meaning of fiqh, and that is to have understanding about aspects of the religion. To have understanding about aspects of the religion. Whether that those aspects are dealing with Islamic jurisprudence or those aspects are dealing with the uh, the fiqh al akbar as 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 the Salaf they used to call it, meaning uh, the aqidah, whether it's dealing with tawheed, whether it's dealing with yani, uh, uh, our belief, the proper belief in in the angels, the proper belief in the akhirah, the proper belief in the books, the prophets, the messengers, qadr al khayri, so on and so forth. When it comes to these matters, fiqh having and, and we talking shari having understanding of the religion as a whole. You find we're lacking. Now, I mean, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Man Allahu bihi khayran yuftaqihu fi din. That whoever Allah was good for, He gives them understanding of the religion in general. But when it comes to the most restricted meaning of the word fiqh, and that's fiqh as it comes, uh, istilahin, uh, 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 which is to have understanding of what of the jurisprudence to have understanding of the jurisprudence you will find that when we examine ourselves on each of these level unfortunately we find ourselves lacking so when it, so if you ask an individual for example but how important is the prayer okay can you name for me the 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 shuruq of salat can you, the, the prerequisites and conditions for the prayer could you name for me from those prerequisites is what is wudu can you name for me and give me some some yani, uh, uh, information. Uh, uh, explain to me some of the rulings of the wudu. What breaks the wudu? 
What do you need for the wudu? What are those things that are mandatory for the wudu? So on and so forth. A person, uh, 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 but then they go into great depth and detail about matters that seemingly are good, but really don't have an impact on their daily life. They're supposed to pray how many times a day? Five times a day and a person is not well versed on his prayer, but he's well versed on other things? It doesn't make sense. Shaitan is playing with people. Now, Shaitan is playing with people. And from, of the, and from the biggest tools that Shaitan uses to distract the people is what? It's fitna. It's trials and tribulations. It's ikhtilafat. Differing between this group and between that group and so on and so forth. People, person gets so caught up, they become like a sheikh in the ikhtilafat. They can tell you this player, what, what the issue is and how it breaks down and what, who said about this one and that one, that one, that one, that one. And then you ask them, yeah, akhi, what is shuruq of salah? Uh, uh, subhanallah, but you pray five times a day. What are the arkan of the salah? Uh, the wajibat. Uh, subhanallah. Then they say, but actually, you know, the tawheed of Hamma Shaykh. Like, what are the aqsam of tawheed? What's the aqsam of tawheed? Some of the ulama say aqsam of tawheed is, 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 is qismain. And qisman. Other ulama say aqsam of tawheed, the latha. Huh? Uh, aqsam. What's the difference? They're both saying the same thing, but why does one say two? Why does one say three? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, subhanallah. Huh? In any event, it is incumbent that we spend time learning. We all acknowledge huh? the kitab, the sunnah, upon the way of the sahaba. Wait, how much do we know about sahaba? How much do we really know about them? How much do we know about their lives? How much do we know about their sacrifice? What can we extract from benefit, reflect and ponder as it relates to their lives? What can we take from them and use as an example? Something that we can... Uh, yani, uh, put into our life, put into our daily life practice. What do we have? What statements from them do we have? So on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as out of his notebook, book, he says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا that, that verily for you in the Messenger of Allah is the most best example. In whom? In the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. So it begs the, yani, the question, how much do we really know about the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How much do we know about it? We have access to it. Walilah alhamd. Naam, we have access to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam, subhanallah, as they say, there's an app for that. Right? There's an app and it has thousands and thousands of hadith in, in an app right there at the, at, at the click of the uh, 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 screen. But do we read it? Do we benefit from it? Do we reflect over it? Alhamdulillah, how many of the books have been translated of the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, yani, Subhanallah, the Sunan Abu Dawood, the Sunan Numaja, translated. Do we read it? We may have it, but do we read it? Riyadh al-Salihin, Laih Imam al-Nawi, translated, do we have it? Do we read it? Lutlu wa murjan do we have it? Do we read it? Subhanallah, so many, so many gems and pearls, yani, benefit, treasures, at our fingertips and we don't take advantage of it. And then we were, and we wonder why our situation is as it is. We wonder why Shaitan tricks us so easily. You see? Because knowledge is that which by way of it the individual will be able to fight off the doubts and the attacks and tricks of Shaitan. Without your weaponry, how can you fight? Without your weaponry, how can you fight? The weaponry of the believer, then it is Qala Allah, Qala Rasulullah, Qala Sahab. That's the weapons of the believer. Allah said, the messenger said, the sahaba said, by way of this, he's able to defend himself from what? From the shaytan, from the shubuhat, from the doubts of shaytan, from the shubuhat of the shayateen, from the doubts of the shayateen of, of the human beings. They're able to defend themselves because when that, when that shubha, when that doubt comes to a person that has ilm, with ilm, he can refute the doubt easily. When that shubha comes to a person who doesn't have ilm, that person is now left with insomnia. He can't sleep now because he can't get over it. They don't know how to deal with the doubt. But when it's mentioned to one who has enemy, he deals with the doubt easily. Very easily. So it is incumbent that we reflect and we focus on those things that benefit us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of his noble book, further highlighting this concept on how we have to be upon the way and we have to follow the way of the Sahaba. Allah ta'ala, he says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ Allah Ta'ala says what means in those who came first and foremost from the Muhajirun, 
from those who made hijrah and from the Ansar, those who helped them and aided them. A, collectively, the Sahaba, the Sahaba, naam, and those who followed them in good, and those who followed them in good. Allah Ta'ala, He says that Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. Radiyallahu anhum wa radu an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. Now, <clears throat> this here, Allah Ta'ala, He gives us three possibilities here in this ayah. Three possibilities. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ and those who came first and foremost from the Muhajirun and from the Ansar. Because remember, the goal is what? Is the end of that. Radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. That's the goal. Right? So how do we get that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells that this is for three groups. Three groups as it relates to the believers. That makes sense? As it relates to believers outside the NBA and the Rasul. Right. Meaning, for this ummah. Those who came first and foremost from the Muhajirun, that's one group. Can we be from them? No. No. That time has passed. We missed that. Right? But, I'm sorry. Can we be from them? No. Time has passed. We're not eligible for that. We, yeah? So, the, so by default, from the three groups, from through process of, of elimination, two of them is removed. We can't be from the Muhajirun. We can't be from the Ansar. We can't be from the Sahab. That's, that's, that's done. So the third group by default becomes what? Becomes the group to be a part of. وَلَدِينَتْ تَبَعُوهُمْ And those who follow them in good. بِإِحْسَانٍ And those who follow them in good. So therefore, our only option is that what? We have to follow the Sahaba in good. If we do that, then Allah Ta'ala, He tells us, then what is for those individuals who meet this description? رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ That Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. Now, Allah being pleased with the, the, the Sahaba, that's not debatable. Allah being pleased with those who follow their way, not debatable. What's debatable? Are we from those who follow their way? That's the question. Are we from them? We want to be from them, right? We want to be from them, but our reality has to match it. Just a claim, just a want, a desire, does it make it so? Our reality has to match it. Now, but <clears throat> the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he also instructed us to follow the way of his companions. Naam, to follow the way of his companions. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he made it clear to us that following the way of his companions is, in essence, following his way, because they're not two different ways. That following the way of his companions is in essence following his way, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. Baik. Wa mad dalil. And what's the proof and the evidence? Naam. This, this is important. This is important. Because our deen is a deen that is based upon proofs and evidences. It's not based upon claims. It's not based upon just because someone said it. No, it's based upon proofs and evidences. This is what is incumbent. Naam. So if anyone says anything about the deen of al-Islam, they have to bring forth a proof and an evidence. Otherwise, what they're saying, we give it no consideration. Has no credence with us. Why? Because it's devoid of proofs and evidences. And our following is what? It's to follow what Allah said and what the Prophet ﷺ said. That's it. We're not looking to follow what no one else uh, is talking about. But what Allah said... In what the Prophet ﷺ said and what the Sahaba said, because what the Sahaba said is a reflection of what of what the Prophet ﷺ he said. That makes sense. But what met the lead? So what's the proof? What's the proof? The proof is that famous hadith, the hadith of Irbad bin Sariyah, where the Prophet ﷺ he said, "Anikum bi sunnati." Naam. And this is after, before this point in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ he told us that there will be much ikhtilaf. Whoever lives from amongst you, you're going to see much different. Much different. You're going to see much ikhtilaf. Someone saying, this is from the religion. The other one saying, no, the, the opposite is from the religion. Someone saying, this is the right way. Someone else coming and saying, no, this is the right way. Now, the Prophet ﷺ told us we'll reach a time like that. Well, you have different claims. This one's claiming this is what's right. That one's claiming that's what's right. Ikhtilaf in the deen. Ikhtilaf in the deen. 
ikhtilaf between the Muslims, differing between the Muslims. Naam. So what is the way out? What is the solution when this type of ikhtilaf it occurs? The Prophet ﷺ, he gave us the solution. The solution is what? فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسُنَّةِ So thus it is upon you to hold to my sunnah. To hold to my sunnah. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي And the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after me. Naam. And the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after me. Right. Do you remember the, the original point? What's the proof that the sunnah of the sahaba is also the sunnah of the messenger? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember that? That was what we're looking for. Right? So that, that's, 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 the, that's the point of reference that we're looking for. It's here in what you just heard. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after me. Naam. So we have in there the mention of what? Two sunnahs. The sunnah of the Prophet and the sunnah of the khulafa, the rightly guided khalifas. Right? But, so the point of the hadith that's the, that, 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 that is the evidence where you can put your finger and say this right here is what? Is the next statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, Addu alayha bin nawajid. Bite onto it with your molar teeth. Naam. Where is, where is the shahid? Where is the point of evidence? Where is the reference point here? Is in the pronoun used by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is in the dhamir used by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Naam. And that dhamir is what? Addu alayha, addu alayha, by onto it, because this dhamir, it is singular. It points back to one thing. How many how many sunnahs were mentioned? Two. In Arabic language, there is a there is a tense for two, a dual, right? So if we were to refer refer back to two different things that were different, separate. Things, then it would have been alayhima by onto both of them too. Did the Prophet Sallallahu say that? No, he said by onto it singular, which is an indication of what that the Sunnah of the Khulafa it is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That makes sense. So when we say that we holding on to the Sunnah of the Sahaba. Have no doubt in your mind, the sunnah of the sahaba is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we'll come to see this, inshallah ta'ala. Why? Because you don't find contradiction between what they were upon in general and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was upon. That makes sense? That makes sense? But the ulama, they mentioned, or before that, Imam Ahmed, one of the great imams, he mentioned, he said, Usulu sunnati indana. التمسك بما كان عليه أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله تعالى عنهم واقتداء بهم. He said that the foundation of the Sunnah with us, the foundation of the Sunnah with us is holding on to the uh, 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 is holding on to that which the companions of the Messenger of Allah. Or the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they were upon. So the foundation of the Sunnah with us is that we hold on to what they were upon. You understand? This, this, this here is our protection. And he said, and we imitate them. This is our protection because what? This is the check and balance here. This is the check and balance. Because remember, as 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 the, the scholars they mentioned, the issue is not that a person brings delir. That's not the issue. But the issue is that a person brings a dalil properly pointing to that which the dalil points to. Meaning that they use it correct. Not just they, they mention the ayah, but they use the ayah correctly. Now, not that they change the meaning, they twist it, they bring it outside of its context. No, but that they use it properly. Now, what is our frame of reference to know whether or not we used it properly or not? Is to check our understanding. Is he checking balance? <clears throat> to balance our understanding against the understanding of who? Of the Sahaba. Now, because if, listen, 
the Sahaba, they were the bridge that Islam came to us. Right? You with me? That makes sense? The second generation learned about Islam from who? From the Sahaba. The Sahaba learned about it from the Prophet. Right? So the second generation became Muslim due to the Dawah efforts of the Sahaba, due to the teachings of the Sahaba. They taught them what Islam is. So imagine, there's nothing from knowledge that we know about Islam except they taught it to us. You with me? So it is not possible that we will come upon new understandings that were foreign to them. Because whatever was the religion then is the religion when now. Allah Ta'ala He says, That on this day I have completed my favor upon you, perfected your religion, and have and I am pleased that you have Islam as your religion, that you have Islam as your deen. So the point is, is that what? Is that the deen, it was perfect. It was perfect. So what's perfect is not missing anything. So therefore, the Sahaba, they had that perfection. And they conveyed that to who? They conveyed that to those who came after them. So there's nothing from aim, there's nothing from knowledge except that they taught it to us. So the point is, is that it will be impossible that we will come upon an understanding that they did not know about it. As the ulama they say, لو كان فيه خيرا لسبقونا إليه That if it was good, they would have beaten us in doing it. If it was good, they would have beaten it. They would have beaten us in doing it because they don't want to convey to us the good that the Prophet وسلم, he taught them. That makes sense? So if we want to know, do we understand correct? Then we have to weigh it against what? Weigh it against the statement of the Sahaba. If we want to see if our understanding of the verse is accurate, then we have to weigh it against what? The understanding of the Sahaba. And this is why you have from the ulama those who they say, and who from the Sahaba understood the verse like that? Who from the Sahaba understood the hadith like that? If we find no one, then this is an indication that what? Then our understanding is wrong. It's faulty. Because if it was correct, you will find someone from the Sahaba saying and pointing to the meaning that we're talking about. That makes sense. So, as the ulama they mention, as Sahaba, رضي الله عنهم, هم خير الناس بعد الأنبياء. As the Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنهم, may Allah be pleased with them. They are the best people after the the prophets. وقتداء بهم دين, and imitating them is religion. Imitating them is from the دين. وهو an انتفاع بفعلهم, and it is to benefit from their actions. To benefit from their actions. Naam ihtidaun. To benefit from their actions and from their guidance. Now, going back, how can we benefit from them and benefit from their actions if we don't know about them? We don't know about their statements. We don't know about them. <clears throat> nothing about them. How are we going to benefit? Alright? But the Prophet Sallallahu he says, as it comes in the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, رضي الله تعالى عنه, فيما رواه وترمذي مصحاه الالباني, and that which is narrated by Imam, or collected by Imam al-Turmidhi, and graded as authentic by Imam al-Albani, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, اقتدوا بالذين من بعلي. He says, imitate the two after me. من أصحابي. Imitate the two after me from my companions. نعم. Abu Bakr with Umar. Abu Bakr and Umar. So the Prophet Sallallahu he told us to imitate who? Abu Bakr and Umar. Naam? Abu Bakr and Umar. And they were mentioned specifically, but in the, but in the other hadith, the, uh, uh, the four imams that were mentioned specifically, and from the ayat and in other uh, 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 hadith, then they are mentioned in general. Like uh, uh, the ayat, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ مَنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تُوَلَّى وَنُصْلِيهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا That whoever contradicts the messenger after clear guidance have been made known to him and he follows a way other than the way of the believers. So in that portion is an indication to follow the way of the believers, meaning who? The Sahaba. نعم, the Sahaba. Now, that whoever takes away other than the way of the believers we will leave him to that, to that which he has left himself to and enter him into the hellfire and what an evil final destination. 
And also the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he spoke about how the Muslims, they were split, break, and divide into uh, 73 groups, and that all of them would be in the fire except for one, and it was asked, and which is that one, meaning that would be saved. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, Ma ana alayhi al ashabi. When I and my companions are upon today. So this is an indication to follow the companions, what? In general. In general. Na'am. But from the companions, and the greatest of them, and the most righteous of them, and the best of them, the best of the companions, rather we should say, the best human being after the prophets and the messengers. Na'am. So this is a tremendous human being. That the only human beings who are better than him are the prophets and the messengers. That's tremendous, right? That's a high, that's a high status, right? But who is, this, who is this righteous person? Who is that? That's who? Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He has a tremendous statement. And we just want to look at, this is as an example. He has a lot of tremendous statements, right? A lot of things we can learn from him. But this shows us how we want to benefit from the companions now, and, uh, uh, and the like where we draw examples from their life that we can apply in our daily lives immediately. Immediately. Now, because see, that's the point. To get better, to do better, to be better. That's the point, right? So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said... Ayyuhannas. He said, O oh, human beings, O oh, mankind, Iyakum wal kadib. He said, Beware of lying. Beware of lying. Naam, lying. To tell an untruth. Or to relate and spread an untruth. For in al kadib, Mujan nibun. For in al kadib, Istemiru, Mujan nibun. Because kedid is that which will make you what ba'id. It will repel you. It will push you away from what? Lil iman. He said, beware of lying. Because lying will distance you from faith. It will distance you from iman. This athar has been collected by Imam Ahmad. Wasnaduhu uh, sahih. And its chain of narrations is correct. Naam. Wa and this is just from yani FYI. Wa ruya marfu'an wala yathbut. And it is also narrated in a form that reaches back to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it is not confirmed. It is not sound. So this is a statement of who? Of Abu Bakr. It's not the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But bila shaku bila ray, this is from what Abu Bakr he learned from who? From the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, Abu Bakr, who was Abu Bakr as Siddiq? He is Abu Bakr as Siddiq, the one who was sincere, the one who yani, sincerely and, and truly believed. Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Well, who was Abdullah bin Uthman bin Amir al Qurayshi al Tamimi? And he is Abu Bakr, and his name was Abdullah. The son of Uthman bin Amir al Qurayshi. He was from the Quraysh at Tamimi. Naam, Mashhur bi Kunyati. And he was well known by his Kunya. The Kunya is Abu so and so or Um such and such. Naam, sometimes people become well known by the Kunya. Sometimes people become well known by the Kunya so much so that the Kunya almost takes the place of their name. Naam, when you say their name, no one knows who you're talking about. When you say the Kunya, ah, Naam, now I know you're talking about. Right? And, and this is a case like this. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he became well known by his kunya. He also became well known by his laqab. He also became well known by his laqab, his nickname, which was al-Siddiq. Which was al-Siddiq. To show you some of the superiority of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the one who is truthful, the one who has, is, is sincere in his iman, the one who, when the polytheists, they came, to the Prophet ﷺ, uh, excuse me, they came to the, the believers after the Prophet ﷺ informed him of the Isra wal Mi'raj, of the night journey and the ascension into heaven. They came and they say, Do you believe your companion is saying that last night he went to Baytul Maqdis and then yani, and he came back in one night 
And this was a month's journey going, a month's journey coming back. Two months to go there and to come back. Now, and they say, he said he did it in one night. And Abu Bakr's response was, if he said it is true. If he said it is true. Now, and, 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 and the like. So from the likes of this situation and other than that, he was, he was turned, he had the name as Siddiq. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he told us that every, every person before they accept Islam, they hesitate. They have a, a period of hesitation. Anyone who accepted Islam, you, you know, you, you realize this, that there was a point where you knew Islam is the truth, but you hesitated, you didn't accept it right away. Now, and then after that hesitation, you accepted it. Everyone who accepted Islam has had this. Now, and I, and I want you to remember one thing, right? Because sometimes people, and it's also from the trick of Shaytan, uh, how he makes, uh, and he fools people into believing that they're better than what they are, and to look down upon others. Right, because remember the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that whoever has yani, uh, the slightest of, of, of arrogance inside of his heart, he won't enter into the Jannah. Right, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi explained that arrogance is to what is to look down, is to reject the truth and look down upon others. Reject the truth, look down upon others. So let's remember this fact: is that what is that the vast majority of the Sahaba they did what they accepted Islam. They accepted Islam. It's unfortunate, but the Shaytan. He has tricked people into believing, right, in this day right now, in this century and right now, that what, that almost like the people who accepted Islam are not real Muslims. They're not true, authentic, real Muslims. You understand? People, yeah, people have said that. People have said to come out their mouth blatant. They're like, you ain't got to, you know, read between the lines. <laughs> and now they tell you straight up. You people have been Muslim five minutes. You don't know nothing. We've been Muslim, you know, thousands, thousands of years. I ain't even real Muslims anyway. People have said this. SubhanAllah. And then when you then when you, you remind them and and Abu Bakr he was born Muslim, he was raised Muslim, then he looked really stupid. You see? Ala kulli hal. Abu Bakr the Siddiq, he was the one who he his faith was 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 strong, was firm, was stronger than all the other Muslims' uh, faiths. Uh, the, Abu Bakr the Siddiq also from his nicknames was Al Atiq, Al Atiq. Al-Atiq, this is, means the one who has been emancipated. Emancipated from what? Was Abu Bakr in a state of bondage and then he got emancipated? No, no. It was never the case for Abu Bakr. Only Allah ta'ala anhu. But Abu Bakr, what? Emancipated from what? From the fire. Emancipated from the fire because Abu Bakr, he's from, he, he, he's the first of what? Of those sahaba who have been given the glad tiding of Jannah. That they will go to the Jannah. Now, Abu, the Prophet said, said, Abu Bakr fil Jannah. That Abu Bakr is going to Jannah. Now, to the end of the uh, hadith. So he had the nickname, the, the one who was emancipated. Now, he also had the nickname of Al Awa. Al Awa. This one may not be as well known. Now, Al Siddiq, well known. Al Atiq, not as well known as Al Siddiq. Now, al maybe not known at all. Very little beauty people know about this name. Naam. But al is a beautiful name. It means the one a kathir dua The one who made dua a lot. Made dua a lot. So from those takeaways and things that we can benefit from is what? Is making dua a lot. Also, it means that the ulama they mentioned al-raqiq al-qalb. The one who has a soft heart. The one who has a soft heart, a good, wholesome, soft heart. This is a characteristic of what? Of, of, of the righteous ones. They have good, wholesome, soft hearts. You have some individuals where Iyadu Billah, and it's from the trick of Shaytan, that they start to practice their religion. Because see, Shaytan has a good way of what? Of getting you to come in through the door and then jump out the window. <laughs> you know what I mean? He has a good way of doing that. So from the way of tricking, if he can't get you to be irreligious, right, then he convince you, no man, you're so good, you're better than everybody else, and then what? You look down upon others. You think you're better than others. You have this hard heart. A person so righteous and so much this and so much that, but their heart seems like it's a rock. Seems like it's a rock, he's just hard-hearted person. Very nasty person, and so on and so forth. But then when he use as a proof, his proof of his, relig his, his religiousness, that he is such and such. It's from Trick to Shaytan. So from the real characteristics of what, of the people of, of righteousness and of iman, is they have a soft heart. Abu Bakr, 
and it's not the the uh, the, uh, 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 the point of discussion here. But he has another statement. He has another statement which is profound. And we talking about who Abu Bakr as Siddiq, radiallahu taala anhu, al Atiq, radiallahu taala anhu, the one who was promised the Jannah. Naam, Abu Bakr he said, never did I hear a verse, never did I hear a verse from the Quran that was speaking about the people being punished. And the bad people, he said, except that I thought it was talking about me. He said, and I never heard a verse in the Quran that spoke about the people of Jannah and that spoke about the good, wholesome people, except that I thought it's talking about other people. It's not talking about me. It's talking about others. Now, and that shows you what the mentality of those who are really righteous. Uh, 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 Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu He was also from those who were promised the Jannah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said well, Umar fil Jannah And Umar is in Jannah Yet Umar he will go to the sahib of uh, sir He will go to the, the owner of, of the secret Hudayfa Who knew the names of the hypocrites And he, was, he would always ask him He will always Now remember maybe he kept, he kept the promise yeah, His promise he's not going to tell who they are You understand So he will always go to him and 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 bother him and by asking, did did, did the Prophet Sallallahu mention me? Did the Prophet Sallallahu mention me? Did the Prophet Sallallahu mention me? Now they but then told him who was mentioned, because I would have been breaking the trust. But what did he told him? He said, "You were not mentioned. You wasn't mentioned, right? Who was mentioned? You're not going to say. But you knew were mentioned. Why? And they say this is because the amount of time that Umar were kept asking." The amount of times he would kept hounding him. Was I named? Was, was I named? Right? To show you that what? Their level of piety. Their level of piety. They have soft hearts. They have soft hearts. Now, and this is a, a great lesson that we need to take from. From those things that lend to the, to the quality of health of a person's heart. Is they're sticking to the truth and staying away from lying. Staying away from lying. Naam. And we learn this. The Prophet Sallallahu he said in, authentic, in, in an authentic hadith, he said, Inna sidq yahdi ilad birr. He said it verily, truthfulness, it leads to righteousness. Truthfulness, it has a direct correlation upon a person's state, a direct correlation upon a person's reality, is that truthfulness, it leads to what? Righteousness. Naam. وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And at verily, righteousness, it leads to the Jannah. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ لَا يَصْدُقُ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا And that a man will tell the truth until he is written with Allah as being a Siddiq. And Abu Bakr, what's his nickname? A Siddiq. Now I'm showing you what the importance of being truthful. The importance of being truthful. Naam. This is the reality and, and, and the good fruit that comes from being truthful. Whereas Kedib, Naaman Abu Bakr, he said what? Iyakum al Kedib. Stay away. Iyakum al Kedib. Stay away from lying. Stay away from lying. Beware of lying. Naam, better, betterly translated. Beware of lying. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Wa inna al Kedib yahdi ila al Fujur. And that Kedib lying. That it would lead to heinous, despicable, vile actions. It will lead to fujur. It will lead to sin, corruption, nasty, despicable actions. And when you look at those individuals who are given to lying, you will see that they are the most, they are the worst of the people. Their morals, subhanAllah. Just look at those people who lie for a living, right? <laughs> I guess which one is a lot of people lie for a living, right? <laughs> Allah almost died. But if we look at, for example, actors and actresses, they lie for a living. They, they imitate and they lie, they act like they, they something they're not. Correct? They lie for a living. That's what they do. <laughs> look at their lives. Look at their, their moral standards. L look, look at them. From the worst of the people. From the worst of the people. Now, and utilize that as a frame of reference, inshallah, to draw a comparison for further uh, what have you. Right? So, this is what lying it leads to. Lying it leads to what? To despicable things, vile character, vile morals, 
vile, vile mores, and so on and so forth. And the Prophet said, Well, in the fujur, yehdi in and that verily this despicable, heinous behavior, sins and transgression, then they lead to the fire. They lead to the fire. When the rajul la yakdu, hatta yaktaba ain't Allah, kadaba. Kadaba. And that a man will lie, that a man will lie until he is written with Allah as a liar. Now, and, 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 and in this, this is, this is incumbent because uh, from the characteristics of the believers that they have muraqibah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they understand that Allah ta'ala is watching them. That Allah ta'ala is ever watching them. So they watch what they say, they watch what they do because they know that Allah is monitoring their behavior. You understand? They have, you know, what others they call what, like a consciousness, a God consciousness. Now, which is why a lot of times you find taqwa, uh, piety, translated as a God consciousness. Because the individual, he, they understand Allah is watching them, so therefore their actions are correct, their statements are correct, they, they're scared of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're scared of his punishment. So they watch what they say. You understand? This is, is the reality is that no matter what the human beings say about you, no matter what the human beings think about you, it does not count if with Allah is the opposite. Do you understand? That's in general. So the people think that you're good, you're so holy, you're so righteous, you're so noble, and so on and so forth. But with Allah, you are a lowly person, you are an irreligious person, you are a foul and corrupt person. No matter what the human beings say about you, it's not going to benefit you. You understand? Likewise, if they think you're the worst thing ever, but with Allah, you are wholesome, righteous, goodly individual, one who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those human beings will never be able to do something to harm you in reality. They'll never be able to harm you in reality. Why? Because with your Lord, you are in good standing. And such is the way of the believer. So the believer strives to, to speak the truth. Why? Because he wants to be written with Allah as one who is truthful. They strive to stay away from, uh, from lying. Why? Because they're scared of being written with Allah as being a liar. Because you see, you may say a lie to me and get over on me. I don't, I don't know you're lying. I believe you. Right? I believe you. I don't know you're lying. But Allah knows you're lying. And that was the lie right there. That gets you written with Allah as a liar. You understand? So the person who is upon righteousness, then they're scared. They're scared to say something that doesn't match reality. Because that's what kedibit is. It's to say something mukhalif al waqi'. To say something that is contradictory to reality. You understand what I'm saying? Now you can that's across the board, right? Describing this as uh, this water as being something other than water, that's opposite the reality. Okay? So if a person were to tell somebody else, they said you have some water, and they, and they lied and said, no, they called it something else, that's a lie. Why? Because what they're saying is contrary to reality. Now, but to uh, categorize something about Allah's deen that's not from Allah's deen, then this is, that's, that's incorrect. This is a lie. This is why some of those Sahaba, they will correct people who made mistakes in the deen by saying, Kedabe Fulan. That Fulan told a lie. Why? Because they said something that was contrary to reality. It's not right. What they said is wrong. It's contrary to reality. So it fits the general definition of a lie. So to categorize an individual with that which is incorrect, then this is what? It's a lie. Right? That makes sense? Huh? That makes sense? And we understand the danger of doing such. Why? Because we know, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned in, in, uh, in Khutbah al Wada'a, in the final khutbah, that what? That the believer is sacred. His blood, his wealth, and his honor is sacred. Like the sacredness of that day, in in this town, so on and so forth. Now, I mean, Mecca, so on and so forth. But it,
So the believer is sacred. So to infringe upon the character of a believer is, is tremendous. Now it's tremendous. To lie about a believer and to say about them that which is incorrect and to categorize them as that which is inaccurate and contrary to reality is tremendous. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's buhtan. It's a slander. Naam, it's a slander. Ala kulli hal. Ala kulli hal. It is of extreme vital importance that we realize the importance of being truthful and telling the truth because this is one of those lessons that we can draw a direct yani, uh, benefit from and implement it inside of our lives immediately. Right? So if the, any takeaway that we get from this, any benefit that we get from Abu Bakr, if we want to know from those things that made him so successful, then Bila Shekhu Bila Raib, undoubtedly it was his sticking to the truth, his striving to be truthful, and staying away from lying, and his effort that he put in to avoiding lying, and the like. So beware, as Abu Bakr al-Siddiq he mentioned, so beware, oh, oh, oh humanity, beware of lying, because verily lying, it will distance you from Iman. Lying will distance you from Iman. And anything that distances you from Iman is something that will mean your destruction. Naam. So again, I encourage myself and I encourage everyone who my voice, it reaches them to strive to learn about the companions, strive to learn about the righteous imams, strive to learn about uh, 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 the noble individuals, not for the sake of just learning about them and being familiar with their lives and their biographies, but so that you can take an example of how they used to practice, you can take an example of their outstanding characteristics and then you imitate that. You imitate that inside of your life. So what we want to walk away from here, from this particular statement, is that we want to strive to be truthful in everything that we say, everything that we do. We want to strive to stay away from lying and being untruthful and disingenuous in that in which we do. That we want to strive to be of those who are upon the truth and who speak the truth. And that we run away from being those who are upon falsehood and who speak uh, with the falsehood. This is the reminder I wanted to bring at this particular point. فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدَرِ وَصَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا